morning. Good morning. On this journey through Corinthians that you have been on for the last few weeks, you have heard Paul explaining to the church in Corinth how they are to think and act in, re in regard to a number of issues that had arisen in their church. Some of these very same issues affect the church today. Divisions in the church, immorality, marriage, and lawsuits are some of the things that Paul is giving his guidance on. For the most part, it's been a case of Paul exposing or pointing out bad behavior or sin and saying, don't do that or don't be that way. Or he gives examples of how people in the church should be. Today's lesson from the 8th chapter of Corinthians continues to teach about Christian behavior, but today it raises the bar or standard on that behavior in a very significant way. We will see and, and learn more that there is more to God-pleasing behavior than just not sinning. Let me explain what Paul was writing about in this section of chapter, in chapter 8. The church in Corinth was surrounded by the practice of other religions, a lot of idol worship. Animals were sacrificed to the idols, and then that meat was eaten by the priest or at meals in the, in the temple, and then it was also sold to the local meat market. The question had come up for Paul about whether a person who ate this meat was engaging in idol worship. Some people said since, that since the idols weren't really gods, that eating the meat was okay, but others felt it was eating that meat was worshiping those idols. So Paul answered the question this way. We know idols are nothing, not real. There is only one God, and Jesus is part of that God, and they made all things, and we live through Jesus. So eating that meat is not really a sin. It would be okay to do that if the person believed in God the Father, God the Son, or the triune God. Then Paul adds something very important, but not everyone knows this. Some, having just given up their worship of idols and become Christians, might feel guilty as if they were turning back to idol worship. It would have been confusing for them to eat that meat. And so Paul said, even if we know it's okay to do something, like eat, eating that meat, we should put no stumbling block in front of a person with a new or weak faith. Okay, when was the last time you ever sir, saw or heard of meat eating, meat, sac eating meat sacrificed to an idol in this time? It's not something that seems relevant anymore. Although with football season starting, meat on the grill is something that people almost get pretty close to, to taking as an idol. But really, it's, it's something we just don't see anymore, and it's a bit challenging to find a parallel in today's world to what Paul is talking about. It would be something that's not a sin in itself, but our use of it could cause or challenge a person who is weak in faith. Perhaps alcohol or money would fit in some way. Certainly, we have to be aware of how we live our lives as Christians and, and how those who look to us as examples of faith might, might take our actions. And, the point, and that is the point Paul is trying to make here. Not only are we supposed to avoid sin, as Christian examples, we should be concerned for other people's faith as well, especially those who have a weaker faith than us. Paul even went so far as to say, if our actions cause a weak brother to sin, or to stumble in sin, even if it's not a direct sin on our, our part, we still sin against Christ. Whoa, that's a tough statement. We struggle just to stay free of our own sin. And now to add this concern about others to our Christian lives sounds like an impossible task. We are almost guaranteed to fail. However, God does want us to be this way. For help in this difficult way of being, let's go back to the opening verses of chapter 8. Knowledge puffs up, love builds up. That's the Bible verse here for the month. It doesn't say knowledge is bad, but that it can cause a person to puff up or to become conceited or try and rely on their own knowledge. For example, a person might think, I'm okay because I know what a sin, what's a sin and what isn't. Paul explains this further in the next verse. The man who thinks he knows something does not know what he ought to know. Or in other words, be careful of relying on yourself and your knowledge. Then comes Paul's point of what is most important. But the man who loves God is known by God. So how do we go about loving God? Well, we love God in our worship through our praise and thanks to him for all he's done, done for us. And then we love God by loving our neighbor as ourselves. Remember when Jesus was asked about which commandment was most important, 
He said the commandments could be summed up by love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Think, this thinking about what God's want is included in what Paul is trying to teach us today. Christian life is more than just avoiding sin for ourselves. There is this desire for us from God and a command from God to love one another. So how are you doing with this? Do you need some help meeting this standard? Do you need some help so that you don't sin against Christ? Let's read our, our first part of Corinthians again. We all know that we all possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. The man who thinks he knows something does not yet know as he ought, but the man who loves God is known by God. Here's where the help to be better comes from. Think for a moment of what the love of God has done for us. Love builds up. If Paul can tell us that our love for others builds up, imagine what God's love can do for us. The love of God is an immense and powerful thing. It changes things. Into a world full of people lost in sin, people who did not really care about others, God sent his one and only Son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now it can be pretty easy in these well-known words to overlook or, or not even see in the first place how much love this action from God contained. God sent his Son to be crucified for us. He sent his Son to step down from heaven, to be humble, then humiliated, then to suffer and die on the cross. The ultimate love of God. He did this so his love could build us up. You have been built up by Christ's love so that you no longer have to fear if you are good enough to be with God. All of the failings of our lives, all of the times we have sinned or not loved as we should, are compensated for and gone. We now have God's love through Christ within us. And this is how we begin to love others and to build them up. This love we have tried from God is too valuable not to share. Yes, we have Christ in us, God's love in us, and that will help us not to sin so much. But this love will also change us into people who go beyond the simple beginning of trying not to sin. That's the purpose of the church, to take God's love and use it to build up people in the church, and then to share that love with the world around us. We are to avoid having an effect on people that might cause their weak, weak faith to struggle. Now Paul's first letter to the Corinthians is all about how the church should be. And today's lesson focuses on how important and how we should be to those who are weak in faith. You can see from these verses in chapter 8 how important Paul and God think faith is. We are instructed to be very careful not to hinder anyone's faith. Faith in Christ and what he has done is the most valuable thing God has given us. We are to treasure it and care for it and be careful not to damage someone with a weak faith. For those around us, our neighbors, especially those with a new or weak faith, we are to love them as God loved us. We are to be concerned for others' faith as, as, as much as we would be if it was our own faith. Our Christian life is not just about us. The eighth chapter of 1 Corinthians is timely advice for today. There's plenty of controversy within the church in our time, there are lots of hot-button issues, much more complicated than eating meat, and the church struggles with these issues. As we interact with those of different views about God, we should remember this Bible verse. Knowledge puffs up, love builds up. Of course, it's not loving to ignore sin or to allow the truth of God to be ignored. The book of 1 Corinthians does not ignore sin at all. It has lots of things about how we are to be better disciples. But we should always remember, in the middle of this book, Paul teaches us that we are to be concerned about the other person's faith. We are to engage people in ways that build up their faith and not hinder or, putting st or put a stumbling block in front of their faith. And this importance of this way we are to be is emphasized in that verse where Paul says, if we cause a weak brother to stumble or wound their conscience, we are sin sinning against Christ himself. Knowledge puffs up and can put people off. Love builds up. Now in later chapters, 1 Corinthians will go on to teach about love in more detail. I expect you will hear about that in a few weeks. Also, near the end of the letter, Paul returns once again to the source of everything. It reiterates how Jesus died for our sins, and that truth will, will be called the thing of first importance. 
Now God has done everything for us that we need to be built up in love. He has done it. It's a, it's, it is proven in the resurrection that Jesus was God and, that, and God's love was proven in the crucifixion. The true Son of God made the ultimate sacrifice and demonstration of love. Now our blessed and fortunate lot in life is to live within that love and learn to share it. Love builds up. God's love will build you up and then we build others up when we do the best we can to share God's love as he has loved us. The love of God builds up. People will try and bring you down. Don't let them. And certainly don't be one of those kind of people. Be someone who builds up in love. Follow Christ on that path. Let's pray. Father God, you sent your son to, to suffer and die for us. And, and we, we can't even hardly understand that ultimate act of love. But we just ask that you... Let that love change our hearts and let us become people who always build others up, especially those of weak faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.